right, welcome to part two of the Victoria Marie Spring Clean Challenge. And we are talking about photo organization this week. And I wanted to come back and do this video specifically on digital photo organization. Of course, many of us have thousands upon thousands of digital photos that we are trying to manage or at least not managing right now. So if you're playing along with this challenge, then more than likely you have some photos that you are trying to get in order. So I want to talk about some ways in which you can do that. And so we'll go through some general organization tips and then I'm going to give you some information about using cloud-based storage and why I highly recommend it. All right, so when I'm going through my photos, one of the things that I want to make sure I keep the emphasis on is keeping photos that I really, really, really like. So right now I'm on my computer and I have my iPhoto app open. And so you can see all these photos that I have here. I have about 6,000 photos that are on my computer right now. Most of all of my photos are backed up to two other sources, which I'll talk about here in a second. So the first thing you want to do this week is you want to pick a starting point. Now the idea is not to go through and organize every single photo that you have on your computer or other devices. So whether you want to start with your computer, you want to start maybe organizing your photos that are on your devices like your tablet or your phone. Um, maybe you have some photos that are organized in digital photos that you need or folders rather that you need to go through and organize. Just pick a point to start with. Again, the goal is not to go through all of your photos this week, but just pick a spot where you can start this process. And of course, this process will hopefully give you motivation to continue on so that you can have a set of organized and sorted photos that you can work through and manage a lot better. So the first thing I wanna do is pick a spot. So I have some photos here that are from a, free, a recent spring break or a recent spring break activities. And so these first set of photos of my daughter and I, that looks like we're at an arcade, we're at a place called Main Event. I've sorted through those photos already, so I'm good to go. And so the next photos I have are us going to Starbucks and then at Target and we're shopping around and I have all these different photos here that I thought I would capture to put along with our um, spring break story. I also have some video footage here that I'm going to use for a vlog. So we're going to ignore that. We're just going to look at the photos. So the first thing you want to do after you've picked a set of photos that you want to organize your digital photos, you want to go through and have a review of your photos and make some decisions. Which photos do you want to first keep? And you want to keep your most favorite photos. And if you're going to use some of these photos for scrapbooking, which I'm sure a lot of you will do, then you want to pick the photos that you are more likely to use in a scrapbook page or that maybe potentially you want to use in a scrapbook page. But moreover, you want to pick the photos that you absolutely love. So let's look at some examples here. So here is a photo of my little girl outside of Target sitting on top of one of the little balls that they have there in front of their um, facility. And in my area, they paint them uh, for the seasons, which, I was, which is certainly very cute. So this is a photo that I definitely want to keep. Here's another photo over here, and I just clicked on and I'm rolling my cursor around it, of my little girl and I at Starbucks, and we're enjoying tea and having a lot of fun. But if you notice here, I have another photo where here we are enjoying our tea and here we are enjoying our tea there. So now I want to decide which one of these three photos I want to keep. Now, I can decide to keep all three if I want to, but then I have to ask myself, how many photos do I need of me and my kid eating a snack and drinking tea from Starbucks, right? So as you're going through your photos, decide, do I need multiple photos of the same thing, the same event, the same subject, the same purpose? Maybe you will be willing to let one or two or more of those photos go and only keep the photos that you really like. So out of these three photos, I think what I want to do is I want to keep this one because I think it's really cute of us drinking out of our cup. And now I'm trying to decide which one of these I want to keep. Now, 
I think this one's cute of my daughter eating the cake ball, though she does have kind of a weird expression there. But I like this one better because it's a little bit closer up and we're a little bit closer to each other in the photo. So I think what I want to do is I want to take this photo and I want to delete it. And that's the brilliant thing about digital photos. You can just right click and hit delete the photo. Now because I use iCloud Photo Library, it's going to tell me that all of my all of my photos will be deleted on all of my devices. And this is specific to to those who use a Mac iOS um, based technology. So if you're using iCloud um, and all of your stuff's backed on iCloud, if you delete from one device, it'll delete it from all your devices. So that's something to be mindful of if you are a Mac user. So I know this, I'm okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. So now I no longer have that photo. Now I have two other photos of her holding her cake ball, one of which she's like in mid-sentence. So this is kind of an awkward, funky photo. And then here's another one of her looking at her cake ball. So I think what I want to do is I want to let this one go because it's not my favorite. So I'm going to let that one go and only keep this one of her looking at her cake ball. So I'm okay with that. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to continue to review my photos and make some more decisions. So here's another one. Here is a photo or a couple of photos of her looking at um, some dresses and some outfits that she likes. So this first photo is of her hugging this dress, which she absolutely loves, and we might go back and get. And here's another photo of her standing by the same dress, but she's kind of looking away. I like this photo better because it does capture the moment of her seeing this dress and going, oh, mommy, I love this dress. So I definitely want to keep that photo. So I think I'm going to give this one away because it's not as impactful or give it away. I'm going to toss it because it's not as impactful. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm okay with that. So there we go. The same for these two photos here. So this photo is the same as this photo, only I had cropped it and put it on Instagram. And of course it has a filter on it. Now I don't need to keep this photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. There we go. And I'm okay to keep these two photos because she's hugging a dress here and she's hugging a skirt here and I'm okay. I definitely want to keep the pictures of her sitting in front of the Target dog, <laughs> which we love. But then I have these three photos here. They tell the same story. They're pretty much the same photo. This one has a filter on it because I put it on Instagram. I don't need that anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that photo. And now it's up to these two photos. And basically what it comes down to is which photo do I like best? And I think, well, I actually... <laughs> I actually like both of them. I like my I like our expressions in this one, but I like this one too. But I don't want to keep um, two photos of the same thing. So I think what I want to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and keep both of them because I'm not sure which one I want to get rid of. And that's okay. I'm going to continue to scroll down to see if there's any more. I'm going to make a decision about that here in just a second. And let's see, I don't see any other photos. Those are all video clips of that trip to Target. So now I'm gonna come back up and try to make a decision about this photo, these two photos. And I think maybe I want to keep them. I think I'm gonna keep them both. So I'm gonna make a decision to keep them. All right, so I've gone through that little trip to Target. Oh, here's another example I want to back up. I was trying to see if I had these photos. So these are photos of my daughter walking on her way to go pick out some items that she wanted to use or purchase with her gift card. I don't need both. So I think this one's sort of a closer shot of her and I like this one better. So I think I'm gonna let this one go. There we go. So I'm happy with those selections. So what you'll do is you'll continue to do this process until you get through your entire set of photos that you are sorting and organizing. So deciding which ones you want to keep and which ones you want to let go of. So I'm going to minimize this. The next thing we want to do after you've gone through your batch of photos and you have them pared down to exactly the photos that you want and that you love, the next thing is, is we're going to sort and organize these in some way. So I have my external hard drive set up and what I recommend that you do is either somewhere on your computer or maybe another portable device like an external hard drive where you can set up digital folders. And these folders will contain the photos that you have sorted and that you want to keep. Now, as I mentioned in video one, I have my folders set up on my external hard drive. I don't have them set up on my computer. You can certainly set up a file 
on your computer to do this. Very simple to do. Now I have my folders categorized by year and then within each folder um, I have different categories or themes for my photos. You set up your photo system um, in a way that works best for you. So you might opt to set up your folders based on year, maybe based on month, and then set up subcategories within those folders. Another thing to consider is to set up a folder strictly for the photos that you want to scrapbook. That way, when it's time for you to do a layout, then you're not searching around for photos. You already have a folder with photos with the um, photos that you want to scrapbook. It saves you a lot of time. You can get uh, right to the creative process. So let's go to into 2017. I have that folder all set up. And for my spring break photos, I have my spring break folder set up. So I'm going to click on that. So here are some of the photos that I've already included in my spring break folder and I'm going to click on my scrapbook folder. Here are some photos that I want to scrapbook later. So based upon what I just organized, I'm going to minimize this just a little bit. I'm going to come here and what I want to do is just highlight some of these photos. Now I do have some video footage that's going to get captured in here and that's okay too. So I'm going to highlight some of those photos. I'm going to come over here to edit and I'm going to copy. And then what I want to do is come over here to my folder. I'm already in my spring break folder. I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste those items in there. And they are there, which is great. So now I have all of these spring break um, pictures in here. Now from this point, once you have your photos in the folders that you need them to go, Next, you just decide what photos that you want to designate for scrapbooking. So I definitely want to grab the photo of us at Starbucks. Well, this one of her sitting on the little rabbit ball. The ones of us at Starbucks, this one with her cake ball. Um, and then I also want to grab this one of her hugging the dress and this one of her hugging the skirt. And again, I'm just going to copy those copy those six items. I'm going to come over here to my scrapbook folder and I'm going to paste those in. So now when I go to scrapbook our spring break activities, I'll have all of these photos ready to go. All right, so another thing to consider as you are reviewing your photos is most of your photo management software will allow you to edit your photo in some way. Now, some folks like to edit their photos, say, using some kind of photo editing service, like a free one, um, like PicMonkey, before they save them to their computers, or perhaps even Photoshop. But a lot of your photo manager managing software like iPhoto um, will allow you to make some simple edits. So if I wanted to edit this photo, I will just click on it and then click edit. And then I can make different edits to this. I can enhance it. I can rotate. I can crop it. Um, I can retouch it. I can do a lot of different things to my photo. Um, which makes it very easy as I'm going through that sort and organization process. So that's one thing you might want to consider is to edit your photos ahead of time, particularly those that you plan to scrapbook. So that way when you have them in your scrapbook folder, they're good to go and all you have to do is print them. Okay, so we've talked a great deal about going through and reviewing your photos and sorting them, as well as setting up digital folders for your photos so you can further sort them out and categorize them. It'll help you manage your photos a whole lot better. And of course, we're only keeping the photos that we want. Let's talk about some ways in which you can back up your photos. Now, most of you more than likely will maintain your photos on your computers or even your other devices like your phones and your tablets, and that's okay. Okay too. It makes it a lot easier to retrieve your photos and work with them and I completely understand that I keep a certain amount on my computer as well um, and a lot of times I try to keep a, a limited amount but you want to make sure that the photos that you have um, are backed up in some way. So I recommend um, utilizing either one or two other options in storing and securing your photos. One of which is using an external hard drive. So I have that folder pulled up, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So an external hard drive is essentially a large USB. And what it is, is it's a device, and this is what it kind of looks like. And there's different types of external hard drives out there. There's some that are much, much bigger than this. But I think for the average consumer, something like a G drive USB, mobile USB works very well. And this is what I have. This is actually looks exactly like the one that I have, except mine is black. Um, I purchased mine for $69 at my local Best Buy. They average anywhere from 40 on up. You decide how much you want to spend, how much space you want.
want. And essentially what it is is a large USB. And it allows you to have a very large capacity. So um, you can get a one terabyte, a two terabyte, or three terabyte, and that's simply how much space is on here. And one terabyte typically is more than enough for the average individual. So I have a one terabyte um, external hard drive. So what you do is you plug this external hard drive into your computer and you just use it as another place to save your photos and documents and that type of thing. So that is one way that I recommend that you back up your photos. Plus this is portable so you can take it with you, you can secure it in a safe if you need to, you can do a lot of different things with your portable device. So external hard drive is option number two. The third option is to use a cloud-based service. Now I highly recommend that if you haven't already to set up some type of cloud-based account that you can start backing up your photos. And the reason why cloud-based technology is so popular is because you can access it simply by going on the internet and going into your cloud-based account. You can upload all of your uh, photo library, your documents, videos, all kinds of things to your account and there's several different companies that offer this cloud-based service. So I talked about iCloud and iCloud is specifically for Mac iOS users. So if you have an iMac or an iPad or whatever type of you know, Mac technology, you're able to set up an account using iCloud. And not only are you able to back up your photos, but you can back up other information on iCloud, which streamlines it when you move from device to device, which is very awesome. Now, the Microsoft equivalent to that is called OneDrive. And I don't think that you have to just be a Microsoft user to do this. You can set up a OneDrive account and you can save your photos and documents, again, backed up. Any iCloud service um, allows you a certain amount of space. Some are free, some you have to pay a fee, and you can select what option works for you, but it's always accessible to you 24-7, uh, 365 days a year. You just log on and you have access to all of your photos that you've uploaded to your account. So Microsoft OneDrive is another option. Some of you may have heard of Google Photos. You can get free storage and automatically um, organize all of your photos using um, Google Photos, and which is a really, really great service. And of course, if you use any other Google products like Gmail or um, YouTube and that type of thing, then you'll know that your account is integrated to utilize a lot of these different services. So um, Google is another really great source and it's free. For those of you who are Amazon Prime members, I am, you can actually store your photos for free with your Prime subscription. So that's one thing that you might want to check out. I believe it's unlimited storage. A lot of these different services provide you a lot um, unlimited storage of photos. Some will limit it, but you'll have to pay in order to get the extra storage. So that's really up to you. But Prime, you get to upload unlimited photo storage as long as you are a Prime member. So I think that's great. And I'm always using my Amazon Prime. So that's absolutely wonderful. Dropbox is also another option as well. And I believe they do have a free option, but for more space, you do have to pay more. I used to use Dropbox and I paid like $100 a year for unlimited storage. And I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, so I used Dropbox before I started using iCloud. So yet just another option. There's also Flickr. Some of you may have heard of Flickr. You can upload your photos. And the cool thing about Flickr is that it's integrated on other social media platforms so you can share your photos and that type of thing with groups and people and so forth if you're really into doing that type of thing. So these are just a few of many cloud-based options that you can choose from. So I would definitely use this as um, either a secondary or a tertiary means of backing up your photos that you can securely get to them. So if something happened to your computer, something happened to your external hard drive, something happened to your scrapbooks or whatever, then you have evidence of your life that's stored in the cloud. So again, very easy to use. All it takes is for you setting up an account and uploading your photos and you're able to easily manage your photos um, using this cloud-based technology. Okay, so you spend time going through all of your digital photos. You've picked out the ones that you love. You've sorted them. You've placed them into your categories. And of course, you have backed them up. And so the very last thing to do, of course, is to print those photos. So whether you print them at home or you send them out to a service to do a batch print. Now, what I like to do is after I have organized a set of photos, I'm going to go ahead and upload those photos to one of three photo printing services. And I'll show you that here in just a second. I am a 
firm believer in printing those photos so you can enjoy them. So whether you put them in a frame, you scrapbook the photos, you put them in a photo album, do something with those digital photos so you don't have a library full of photos that you don't really ever look at because they're on your device. So go ahead and print out those photos. Now, now if there's a photo printing service that you love, go ahead and post that below. I know folks are always looking for the best photo printing services that will certainly yield them a very high quality product. So let me show you three that I've used over the years that I use pretty regularly when I'm printing my digital photos. So what I have pulled up on my screen are three photo printing services that I love. Now I am not being paid to endorse any of these. These are just me as a consumer sharing with you what I enjoy using to print my photos. The first one that I print from a lot is Persnickety Prints and I mentioned this in the last video. I like Persnickety because the prices are reasonable, the quality is great, and it is one of very few photo services that will print your photos with a white border. I absolutely love it. All you have to do is just set up an account and you log in you can upload your photos. There are also other products and services that Persnickety Prints provides as well so you can enlarge photos, you can do project lifestyle photos, really cool products and excellent pricing. The next photo printing service I like is Shutterfly and I've been using Shutterfly for a long time. Um, their photo prints are pretty reasonable. They often um, run sales on their photo prints as well as their different products. You can see here on their screen they have a variety of different offerings. Um, I especially like Shutterfly for their photo books and I'll have photo books printed usually around the holiday time for my in-laws. Um, but anyway this is another really great option to batch print your photos. And then lastly I like to use local um, companies as well such as Walgreens or CVS. They run really good specials on their prints like right now they have 40% off prints, posters, and enlargements. Now I'm filming this on March 22nd so of course this sale will probably change if you're watching this video um, past March 22nd but at least right now they're offering 40% off prints so whenever you are getting ready to batch print your photos look for those sales so you can save some money um, I like going to Walgreens because of course I can order the photos I can pick them up typically same day um, and I don't have to worry about waiting or paying shipping costs um, they do have a shipping option but why do that if you live close to a Walgreens or a CVS the quality is great I think persnickety and shutterfly's quality is a little bit better but again, I like the sales at Walgreens. And so if I want something quick, fast, in a hurry, then I will um, upload my batched photos to Walgreens and then pick them up the same day as I order them. So I hope this information has been helpful for you, at least in trying to figure out an organization process to help you manage your digital photo library. If you have any questions, go ahead and post that below. Don't forget to come to the Victoria Marie Group if you're playing along with any of the challenges that have been offered this month. We'd we'll love to have you there. If you have any questions, recommendations, and ways of which people can better manage their digital photos. Why don't you go ahead and post that below? I'm sure other people would love to know, particularly from those of you who have a system down pat and a system that works for you. Also, if there are any other devices or cloud-based technologies that you are using that you find to be particularly helpful, go ahead and post that below too and share it with the community. I'm sure everybody would love to hear it. All right, so the next video that's gonna come on later this week, we're gonna talk about organizing our print photos. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you check out the video Victoria Marie blog for more information about today's video and the information covered in this video. And I will see you guys next week.